Hello, my name is Betsy Upros, conservation photographer at the Powerhouse Museum. I'd like to talk to you today about photographing your garments in situ in a museum environment. And this room here has normal um, bulb lighting, which is tungsten lighting. And when you're in your museum, you, you would need to find a space that has a good flood of light before you begin photographing. We have chosen this space because this space um, not only has a good flood of light, but there are not too many objects on the floors as well. There are things on the walls, which I will show you uh, how you'll be able to cover those temporarily to photograph your object using masking tape, which doesn't harm the paintwork on the wall. So as you can see, we're just covering the um, paint, the photographs, the framed photographs on the wall and draping the fabric onto the floor using a clean white sheet or grey preferably if you can find that. Once you've done that, as you can see, that's covering what's on the wall and then you can place your fabric. This, this piece of fabric's not um, too long. I mean, you can have a piece that sort of comes out to the floor a bit longer as well. Um, so it's a bit more ideal for bigger gowns with um, big skirts. And just place the garment like so. Okay. And um, I want to demonstrate using a reflective board. All you need to get is a white phone call board or cardboard, which is um, something you can perhaps buy at a stationery store. You can get very fancy photographic reflectors, um, but however, a white board does the same job. Um, the idea of a reflective board is that you have it close to the object like so, and the idea is that the light from the ceiling will bounce onto, fall onto the, the white board and then bounce back onto the garment. Um, it's probably more evident with black or dark coloured garments. And yeah. even the tripod itself, like so, will help you get a bit of bounce back onto the garment. Now what I'm going to do is photograph this on auto to begin with. Ah, now see, I've got, the, I had the flash on, and in a situation where the light is terrible, you, you can use a flash, but I highly recommend it that you don't, if you can help it. Why is um, that, Victor? Well, flash tends to, particularly a flash on camera, it tends to give you um, a, sort of a, a highlight um, spot oh, on the yeah. centre of the garment, and it's like a flaring mm. sort of... Um, you know, washed out sort of point of the garment or any object for that matter. Um, when we use proper photo photographic studio lights, we have soft boxes on the flash and the light's very controlled. But usually with the flash on a camera, you'll end up getting those little hot spots. Um, you can get away with it with textiles. However, um, with some fabrics, particularly, you know, the, um, those satins mm -hmm. and things, you'll, you'll definitely get the hot spots. So make sure that the flash is switched off. And we'll just shoot that again. Um, okay, I might just ask you to just, yeah, because it does interfere a little bit with the light. Okay. When you are going to um, adjust the exposure, you need to learn how to photograph with the camera on manual. So I'll put the camera on manual. You need to get a good depth of field. What that means is you need to get a good focusing range. So I recommend that you put the f-stop on your camera as high as it can go because that will give you a good depth of focus. And then you can adjust the speed, whether it be a slower shutter to allow more light in. Um, a quick shutter, of course, will allow less light to fall onto the image plane. This camera goes to f8, and that's its maximum, and then you have to adjust with the speed to get the right exposure. So I'm just doing that now. When you work with manual, the uh, little image viewer at the back of your camera, you'll be able to see, and it actually shows you um, how light or dark it is going. So if you just choose to be slightly darker, you'll pick up all those details that I was talking about. Okay, let's check that. Oh, 
I'm just checking now. Yes, and that's picked up the details quite nicely, just by slightly darkening the image. But I am going to use that reflector board, okay? Thanks. So we'll um, just pick up a little bit more light on the hem. Yeah, I think I might just put it there. And I'll just reshoot that. I don't know if you could hear that, but the shutter speed was fairly slow um, because I have the f-stop for the good focus, the focusing uh, plane um, at f8, and I have to have a slower shutter speed to allow more light to enter the image plane. Um, I'm just going to zoom in now. This dress has some beautiful embroidered detail. Um, is that embroidered, Kate? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, on the um, sort of lower part of the skirt. So um, it's always a nice thing to do, you know, if you've got some lovely details like that, just to do, you know, one or two shots of a close up shot of that um, to. remember um, in terms of the aperture and shutter speed if you can visualize the human eye and your pupil when there's a lot of light uh, the pupil becomes smaller in the, in the human eye and of course in a dark environment your pupil dilates to allow more light so this is how the aperture works um, in the camera it's sort of based on the human eye so um, when you have this the smaller smaller hole uh, which is the higher numbers on the diaphragm of the camera, which is the f-stops. So the higher the number, the smaller the hole, uh, like f-16, is of course a smaller hole than f-5.6, for instance. When you, you got a close-up of the detail, and you do it for damage as well, you? you? Oh, get a close-up yeah, there is damage. Yeah, that's a good point. And also, as Kate mentions, for damage, um, anything that, uh, or staining on an outfit, if it's particular staining or damage, um, a close-up of that damage is always a good idea to document. So Kate's just turning the gown around and we're going to do another shot of the side to show the sleeves. Is that um, right this, this hasn't got a bustle, but I guess it's quite yeah. good to show the bustle. Yes, yeah. when you're doing the side, yes. Yeah. Okay. You do all four sides? Um, I normally do. I do the front two sides and the back and any details that are required. Oh, this mannequin. I don't want to do this up because it's, um, it's a little bit tight. Yeah. Um, are you able just to move it slightly over to the left, the whole thing? Thanks, Kate. Towards me? Oh, yes, thank you. Is that possible? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, as you can see, the mannequin's a little bit too broad shouldered for this particular gown. So as I mentioned to you before, every, every camera has its unique dials and buttons and so on and so forth, but um, the, in, if you read your manual, it'll tell you how to work in the manual mode so that you can adjust your f-stop and shutter speed to either, in our case, he was a white or underexposing, and the reverse for black.
also don't be concerned if you're seeing the edges of the cloth, etc., because most um, camera imaging software that comes with the camera that you buy, um, you, let, you can crop things on the computer. So if there's anything you know, um, that, you, that you don't want in the image, you can sort of crop it neatly. It's good to get in as tight as possible, but you, of course you can only go in so far as the hem and the, the top of the garment. And anything on the side, um, you can sort of crop later once, it's on, once the image is on the computer. Kate and I are demonstrating now how to photograph um, on a slanted board uh, garments that are too fragile to be put or dressed on, on a mannequin. Um, you know, you can photograph skirts, bodices, any kind of uh, garments at all that are fragile that need um, to be laid out flat. So we're using here two um, folded up trestle tables together. Um, and all, as you can see, there's two chairs supporting them. Like so, I have to say, um, the museum unfortunately here didn't have a complete piece of board. I think it's probably much better to have a, a board made up. It doesn't have to be a really heavy thing. And a Just one board group would do it. Yeah, Corfu is great actually. Um, a board made up specifically for these, these sorts of shoots. Um, so it can't be too sloped, can it? Because otherwise the garment would be That's fine. right, exactly. You need to have it at a point where it's, you know, nothing's going to slip off. So as you can see, we're putting the grey cloth or your sheet, whatever you have, um, over the two tables. And as I mentioned, preferably the one piece of board is more ideal. Um, but this can work um, as well. And Kate's now going to get a, a black little bodice top and place it down and just spread it out as much as you can um, I should have some gloves to help you Kate I'll do it thank you so, so we could actually uh, put a bit of tissue paper in there to fill it up so um, just give can, it a body. you can do that yes um, if you wanted to sort of bring out the shape of the garment a bit better and try and just centre the piece on the cloth as much as you can. Of course hiding the tissue. Oh, so this has got one of those waistbands. Right. Where would you like that? Oh, just down like that. That's showing that. Now whilst Kate is doing that, I'm going to get organised at this end. Now again, we've placed the slope board in the same area where the, the flood of light seems to be the best spot in this area. Can you see that tissue paper? Uh, no, that's great. Okay, now I would like to just suggest also at this point that you get as, as high as possible over the, over the object so you don't have foreshortening um, so that you're more above it looking down so you're not getting any distortions um, as much as possible. I, I know in some cases that can be a bit tricky but um, and you might need to use a ladder but do take care when you're um, you know, stepping on the ladder wear flat shoes and have someone to hold the ladder for you if you need to get above. However, having said that, when you're photographing black, you won't be able to hand hold your camera because the technique I'm going to use now again is using the camera on manual mode, but I will be, in this case, the opposite to white, I'll be overexposing the black to show um, more of the detail of the black. Uh, the first thing I'll, I'll do is an auto shot uh, without the flash. Okay. And now what I'll do is slightly overexpose the image by turning the camera to manual to show you the difference in detail. It's sort of trial and error. What you're going to have to do is bracket your shots even, sometimes take a normal shot and then take um, 
one, uh, one stop overexposed and then two stops overexposed. And then see how which image on the computer screen, once you've got the mark, see which looks best to your eye and then select that one. I guess that's the beauty of digital photography. You yes. can take lots of photos. That's right, mm -hmm. without having to run out of film and changing mm -hmm. roles, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. And particularly, of course, um, the cards that you buy, if you sort of get a card that carries a lot of images, like with one gigabyte, or two gigabyte cards, and um, you'll be able to have a, a carry, it will carry a lot of images on the one card. A little beep shown here, and this is me checking the image. Yes, yeah, so I've slightly overexposed the garment now, which brings out all the details. Um, otherwise, you'll see the difference with the auto shot, it'll be just a black mass with no detail. So we can do the back of that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah, and the other thing that uh, we do is um, the inside of the um, the bodice, showing in a lot of cases um, the boning in the bodice, um, and sometimes the linings have been very um, poor, in a very poor state, so they need to be documented as well. And also um, manufacturers' labels. Yes, man, that's right. And details of that can be made as well. So the, the great thing here is one, once you've got the exposure right, um, it's set and you can just continue shooting the insides, the backs, and you'll know that you're happy with the exposure that you've selected. Okay, so now we do the back. Do you still want that down like that? It's all like put it back in. Um, yeah, I guess probably because we've documented that oh, now, yeah. it's probably good to hide that. I was wondering if it makes it look a bit nicer. Is that the right position? Oh, that's great, thank you. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, as you can see this garment has a white lace uh, trim on the sleeve, so be mindful not to overexpose a black garment too much so that the beige parts become washed out, so you have to sort of find a happy medium with that um, when you're adjusting the exposure. So Kate's helping me now to um, photograph the skirt. Of that, we do the front. Yes, yeah, so we'll do the front, front first. I mean, if you end up unfolding it and the back comes up first, well, that's okay. You just do the back first. So, say as you're handling the object too much. So, I'm just now photographing the skirt. Sometimes, when you're photographing um, an area which is sort of a black mass or you know white for that matter and there's not much texture or definition, and um, the autofocusing cameras have trouble focusing, unless you're manually focusing. However, to alleviate that problem, um, just get your grey card or just a bit of cardboard, clean cardboard like this, and just place it onto the garment in the centre, and then the garment will then have something with an edge on it to focus, and when I've done that, I'll get Kate to remove the, you have to depress the button, your shutter release halfway down to focus. Um, oh, I need to lower it, just lower it. Thanks, Kate. <coughs> okay, and then um, Kate, could you remove that and focus? And then I continue shooting. And there you'll be, you'll know that you've got everything nicely focused. Okay, so we'll now do the back of the garment. I'll just put my gloves on. 
it's always good to have help, particularly with fragile garments um, when you're using a slope board. Try and get the centre seam. I think that's yeah. is that centre seam? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So I'll just use the same method, a little grey.